Thank you for being here, and thank you, everyone, for, for being here. This is a great, great day for Pennsylvania, but, but more important, this is really a great day for Pennsylvanians, right? This is really a great day for all of us. I am going to sign a bill. I'm going to say a few words, then some people who have been very instrumental in making this happen will, sign, will say a few words. Hi, Mike. Good to see you. And, and uh, uh, then I'll sign the bill, uh, and then I just want to go out and say hi to all of you. And I think that's what we all want to do. This is a big, big day. I think I said this on Wednesday night, but there are three things that I think this says about our system. First of all, first of all, it says that we can work together. Every once in a while, in fact, it happens a lot, right here in this building, we don't think about whether this thing is a Republican thing or a Democratic thing or a conservative thing or a liberal thing or a Senate thing or a House thing. This is something that's good for Pennsylvania. And that's what we thought about here. This is a, a show that not just one time, but in things that really matter, we can and do work together. And I think that's a great thing. Second thing this says is that, and I said this again Wednesday, when you have people who represent a cause as eloquently and in as heartfelt a way as the advocates for this have done, it shows that we can actually get something done that means something. We're not re responding to a special interest here. We're not responding to somebody who makes campaign contributions. We're responding to people here who are telling us that there is a real human need here in Pennsylvania. And we did that. We responded to that. So I want to thank the advocates. And the third thing is that, once again, we can do things that matter to a lot of people. Really matters. And we did that here. So I just want to congratulate all of us. Let me say one final note. When I, before I came to work on Thursday, a uh, guy I know, a friend of mine, a construction worker, came up to me. And I said, OK, what did I do now? <laughs> he said, uh, hey, Tom, I, uh, OK, first of all, where's the respect? He said, Tom. So I said, he said, uh, I have a friend who has MS. He's in the advanced stage of MS. He's in a wheelchair. And he told me he wanted me to tell you something. And I said, what? He said, thank you. Because because of this, because of this, he said, this liberates him, it liberates his doctor. Because of this bill, they can now, he can be treated with, with not hard drugs that he believes and his doctor believes might be hurting him, but with something that actually might be more effective. And all we're asking here is to have the ability to have that doctor make a decision in conjunction with his or her patient that will make that patient's life better. That's all this bill is about. So I am going to pass that thank you on to everyone here. Senator Fulmer, thank you. Fulmer! I'm just passing this on. I'm the, I'm the messenger here. I'm just okay. Thank you. Passing. Senator Leach, um, Representative Vera, thank you. Representative Petrarca, Representative right behind you. Right behind <laughs> here, yeah. Ed, Representative Ganey, Representative Cohen, everybody here, Senator Teplitz, everybody who's been like part of this. But most of all, most of all, all of you who have been advocates for this, thank you very much. Yeah. That comes from the second. <laughs> So before I sign this, there are a few people who want to say some things and I think need, really deserve to, to have some time. And I'm going to turn it over first to Senator Fulmer, Mike Fulmer. Mike! Mike! Senator Fulmer! Hey. Mike, 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 Mike!
day. This is your day. This is about the people of Pennsylvania. This is your day. And I am so, so grateful to be part of this. So much has been said, uh, a lot has been said, and I, I've, I've been thanking everybody, but today, if you would just bear with me for just a tad longer, just a tad longer, I, I will try to keep my comments. I'm trying to have a better carbon imprint uh, <laughs> with, with less hot air uh, and so forth. But um, my point is, is that there's so many people that, that, and there were so many things that made this work. And um, going forward, going, is in the very beginning, uh, two mothers came to me. And they came to me with a message. And they came to me with what they were going through with their children. And those two mothers was Lolly, who you're going to be hearing from uh, a little bit later. But I'd like to oh. say for Lolly. Oh. Uh, and Dana. And, and uh, Dana. Dana, come here. I, I know I, I know you want to say a couple things here, and I just want to give a little time to, to Dana because... No, finish your speech. Okay, finish all right, all right. <laughs> ADHD, I'm sorry, squirrel. Uh, I took you on that. You know, last year at the farm show, we were able to have a stand that we educated a bunch of people on, on this issue. I mean thousands of people. But you see, folks, that stand would have never taken place, would have never happened, except for two small business people from my county, Lebanon County, Dennis Ballback and Monica Klein and their alpaca farm. And they're over there. And I just want to say this. Monica fought real hard for us to get this into the farm show, and I want to thank all the folks over at the farm show for allowing this to happen, because there was some resistance, because it's a very controversial issue. But because of, of their hard work and their sacrifice, they paid for the stand, they gave it to us to advocate, and we did a great job that week, and we met thousands and thousands. We handed out almost 4,000 pieces of literature to, to folks to help educate on this issue. So I, I'm going to just say thank you very much. And by the way, Monica, I, I have your dad's watch here. Her, her father was Lieutenant Governor Ernie Klein, and she gave me his pocket watch, and that was my, my good luck charm, so I kept on rubbing it, and I was rubbing it really hard the last couple of days, I have to tell you, uh, in all honesty. So I'm going to say that. And then I'm going to do something out of the ordinary. They always tell you that your staff is there to make you look good. I, I'm blessed with uh, one of the best staffs anybody could ever have. And I want to start out with my, my, my Lebanon District Office staff, who Marie Tribioli, Andy D'Annunzio, and Barb uh, Shutter, who had to listen to me moan and groan and vet and, and so forth as we were trying to get this done and taking all the phone calls in the district. I also want to thank in the Harrisburg staff, I got to say, Fallon Binner, I, I don't know where you are, you're out there somewhere, uh, but Fallon sometimes felt that she wasn't part of this because she did my scheduling and she took all the phone calls and had to put up with me and, uh, and did a great job. And Fallon, you were a major part of this and thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Gwen, Gwen Dando, uh, what can I say? Uh, even while you were getting your, your daughter's uh, next meal, you were reading drafts. She breastfeeds, so, and uh, I didn't mean to embarrass, but uh, too much information. But, my point is, hey, it was all real, man. It was all real. Organic, right? It couldn't be better than that. And then Michael Tortino. Michael, you here? Michael, my, Michael was, the, was my ERC expert. Uh, she probably forgot more about ERC than a lot of us know. And, and that's for the regulation side. And then finally, to a chief of staff who kept me focused. Uh, I'll get his name. Who kept, who kept me focused, who told me things that I needed to hear, not what I wanted to hear, and kept me strong. It was actually the perfect chief of staff, by the way. And that is Fred Sembach. And I just want a big hand out for all that. They did a great job and, 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 and such. And finally, before I bring Dana up here, I, I just want to say that I'm just honored to be able to be part of this 
and to all the friends that we made. I mean, I met all the moms. I, I, I could go on forever with the names, and, and I didn't mean to leave anybody out because this was a total, total team effort. And this is, again, I'm gonna close with this before Dana comes up. This is your day. And one more time, we won! Yeah. Right? Yeah. We won. Yeah. Dana. Yeah. Hey, can Dana, can she talk with you? Later on, talk with Dana. And then you, yeah. okay. All right, my, my next, you're gonna talk with, sorry. I'm really sorry about this as my, I do have ADHD, so I'll be the first to admit it. I'm, I'm going to introduce my cohort in crime. It was a real honor to work with you, brother. Absolutely. Yeah, God bless. Thank Senator you. Dale and Leach. Yeah, Dale. 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 Thank you. Thank you. I would start off by noting that ADHD is not one of the 17 conditions that are covered. <laughs> Um, so we can't help you out, Mike. But we have done it. Marijuana is medicine, and it's coming to Pennsylvania. And when I say we, that's exactly what I mean. This would not become law today if it was not for Governor Wolf, obviously Senator Fulmer and his staff, Leader Reed and dozens of House members and staffers, some of whom are here today, my entire staff, who I will name because they were such an integral part of this day to day. Zach Hoover, Mary Pat Tomei, John Tu. <laughs> Steve Hohenstein, Samantha Altoff, Judy Trombetta, Zach Pizek, Deb Barol, Charles Brukowitz, Caroline Edith, Zoe Allen, and Chad Hoffman. And, you know, my staff, when, they say, when, when Mike said, your staff is to make you look good, I am really just the eye candy of my operation. <laughs> my staff is the brains behind it all, and I thank them for all of their hard work. <laughs> Obviously, I want to thank all of the moms, Lolly and Kristen Brand and Dana and the hundreds of advocates who turned this building into their home over the last couple years Absolutely. to make this happen. <laughs> when I first introduced the medical marijuana bill in 2010, I couldn't get a single co-sponsor. I could not have imagined that a team like this would eventually rally around this bill. It is truly a humbling experience, and as many of you know, I am not given to bouts of excessive humbleness. <laughs> no, it's true. it's true. The pain of illness touches us all eventually, and so we all united to defeat it. One by one, my favorite right-wing lunatic in the world, Mike Fulmer, we worked together, we, st we studied, we begged, we cajoled, and we argued and we convinced our fellow legislators to join us. It was a long and difficult process and it was not without its moments of pain and disappointment, but we persevered. And now let us pause to actually reflect on what happened here in this place because it doesn't happen often enough. We stopped being Democrats and started being caregivers. We stopped being Republicans and started being patients. We stopped being liberals and started being problem solvers. And we stopped being conservatives and started being compromisers. And we stopped being politicians and started being human beings. The result is the most significant piece of social legislation to pass in generations. It is among our proudest moments, and it is our gift for generations to come. And as I behold this, I can't help thinking this is what government is supposed to look like. The marrying of our profession and our common humanity. As President Kennedy said, our most basic common link is that we all inhabit the same planet we all breathe the same air, we all cherish our children's future, and we are all mortal. And today, we are all healers. Yeah. Yeah. 
Finally, I'm going to remove some of what I'm wearing. I know you've all been waiting for that. Specifically, this green campaign for compassion bracelet. I was given this three years ago by a mother with a sick child. I promised I would not take it off until this bill was signed into law. And I have worn it every moment since. Incidentally, the same is true of the rest of my wardrobe. <laughs> so I remove this as a symbol as a promise of a promise made and a promise kept. I'll donate it to the Smithsonian or the Hard Rock Cafe, whoever asked for it first, but Maybe wash it. <laughs> I've never washed it, not once, not one time. But we will walk out of this building today into a new world. Here is to our future together. Yeah. Thank you. And then, And next, I would like to introduce my second favorite right wing lunatic, Representative Mike Burr. Where? Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> now, here's the thing you do Mike. Right winger. Down home, uh, I'm called a rhino. <laughs> what a great day to be here at this Capitol a Sunday. Governor, thank you for two reasons. One, I got out of yard work for three hours. The bad news is it's there waiting, just like a lot of other legislation we have to get done. Secondly, it gives a great chance for all these families who have just crossed this state on every level to lobby us for the work that they wanted to see done in Harrisburg. So it gives a chance for those who can't get here during the week to lobby us. And I think it's a great courtesy, Governor, you did that today to allow all these families to be here. So a little over two years ago, a mother, Erin McCann, and her son, Ryan, came to my office. And for those of you who do not know, my original issued nightstick is on my Capitol office desk, and I live, eat, and breathe law enforcement. So imagine this family coming into a former narcotics officer talking about Dana Leach kind of talk. <laughs> you know, our job as le legislators, the easiest thing to do is just say no. The hardest thing to do is be patient and listen and educate yourself on the issue, and you try to become yes. We held a public uh, town hall meeting at Erin's request, and I'll never forget my phone call to Senator Fulmer. I said, you know, they call me a rhino. What are they calling you now that you introduced this bill? Marijuana Mike. Marijuana Mike. <laughs> so we put, you know, real quick town hall together. We packed the Lower Province Township meeting hall. And then we got to meet Heather and Hannah, Heather and her daughter Hannah, who came down from Pittsburgh, and then returned to Pittsburgh that night. I'm, my district is right outside of King of Prussia in Montgomery County. And I sat and listened to this testimony, and then I'm seeing a mother and her child drive from Pittsburgh and back hours later. So I had to listen. And by the end of that hearing, I stood up, I, I grabbed Aaron. And I said, we're going to do this. I'm, I'm going to weigh in. I'm going to support this bill. I remember talking to Senator Fulmer, who came down to that hearing and, and testified and helped me get my way through this. Because my only observation of marijuana all along was that it was a narcotic. And if you had it, I would arrest you. So I had some transition. But see, you can transition if you're willing to listen. And you're willing to listen to the facts. And I talked with uh, Representative Dom Costa, who is a Democrat, and we talk every single week. He's a former chief in Pittsburgh. He's a co-chair of the Law Enforcement Caucus in the House. Mike Regan, who's a former U.S. Marshal. And I... Mike here. Yep. And we talked about how we go about this, and we wanted to make sure that we were all on the same page. Let me just say this. This is a medicine. 
And the fact that some people all of a sudden want to in involve and feel that the credible FDA is important to us. I was blown away on the floor to hear the rhetoric. But it's so important for us to focus on the end goal, the day where he takes off the bracelet, and the day where this gentleman here signs his bill into law. And that's where we are here today. And if I continue to talk, it's never going to become law. <laughs> But, Governor, thank you for having me speak. This was one of the hardest transitions on policy I've ever had. But here's the reality. There are no black helicopters in this bill. There's no black market. There's already that market. And it's another market that I need all of your help to do. And the Governor knows this and feels passionately about this. We must, all of you, take this victory and the energy from this victory and work with us to deal with the number one killer in Pennsylvania, on. opioid abuse. Opioid abuse has no party, has no color, has no religion. It's one thing in common, it kills, and we will work together with this group I hope you as a coalition will help us because, let's face it, that's the killer. What we're doing today is the healer. Thank you. And the Democratic Chairman of the Judiciary Committee, which I sit in, and good friend, Representative Joe Petrarca. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Obviously, fantastic, uh, fantastic day to be here. I think I'm going to miss the, the marijuana advocates who, who sat right over there in this Capitol for, uh, for days upon days, weeks, and, and months. Uh, certainly, we, got, uh, we got, to where we got to where we need to be. If we continue to have days like this, Governor, we're going to need a bigger rotunda, <laughs> which, is, which, is, uh, which is fantastic. Ninety percent of Pennsylvanians support medical marijuana. I think, uh, I think you're all here today. Uh, fantastic, fantastic. Um, as uh, Representative Verb said, Verb said in the House, when we got this bill from the Senate last summer, I think there was a lot of skepticism. And uh, we formed a task force in the House, uh, Democrats and Republicans, um, all of which are, are here with us today, where we started to talk about these issues, started to talk about what this means, uh, what this means to Pennsylvanians. And um, very early on, I got a call from a constituent of mine, uh, Diana Briggs, on behalf of her son, Ryan, who uh, asked me, um, what I think of medical marijuana. And I said, I don't know that much about it, uh, to which she replied, well, that's going to change. <laughs> and, uh, and, and change it did. And, uh, and, and again, here we, uh, here we are today. It was at times a very difficult road. Um, as we got toward the end, I think so many people realized the benefits of, of medical marijuana that it just, it just certainly carried the day. Uh, in, in the House, there are so many people to thank. Uh, we worked very well together, Republicans and Democrats, on the task force. Uh, I, too, would like to thank my staff, uh, Tim Clodges, who did a lot of work on this, and especially Sarah Speed, who Woo! did... Sarah Speed! Sarah! Who did tremendous work uh, day in and day out on this issue and, again, helped us to get, uh, to get where we are today. And as we, as we are here uh, in, in the final moments before this becomes law, I would just like to say, as, as people thank all of us for our work, that we want to thank you. We want to thank the advocates. We want to thank the moms. Without, <laughs> without the mothers, we would not be here. And it certainly reminds me of, of the famous uh, Margaret Mead quote about, uh, never doubt that a small group of concerned citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Well, well here we are. Here we are. As, and again, as I see this, I don't, uh, I don't see us as politicians or Republicans or Democrats or elected officials. We are just people finally speaking, trying to help other people, our veterans, our families, our children. And with that, I would like to introduce uh, someone who's getting a very special birthday present today. Absolute right, superstar. Right, right.
absolute superstar, a tiger, Lolly Bench. my family tops this birthday next year. <clears throat> um, thank you all. By the way, that was very sweet. Um, thank you. Uh, it's a little bit nerve-wracking to be up here. I didn't really um, write down a speech, and um, I'm just a wee bit nervous, but um, I, I think I mostly am just filled with gratitude today and want to just take this opportunity to, of course, extend um, thanks to uh, several heroes in my heart. Um, first of all, to Governor Tom Wolf. Yes. Um, yeah. I'm not sure uh, when the first time was that I met Tom Wolf, but um, you know, at the time we were dealing with a very different administration. We actually, along with uh, Dalen over here, had to threaten to sit in in the former governor's office in order to get him to return any of our phone calls, just to get a return phone call. <coughs> so as soon as I met Tom Wolf, um, and you know, went back to the group, of course, and said, "Oh my gosh, he's he's fabulous. You're gonna love him." Um, we were filled with hope from that moment forward, and we had your back, and. You've always had our back, and we just want to say thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, we have several other champions, uh, Dalen and Mike here. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Champions in the house, Ed, Mike, Jim. Oh my goodness! There's just there's so many of them, and and I can't possibly name them all. Um, but it's been a pleasure to work with each one of them. Um, you know, a lot of people have said to us, "You would have never gotten this issue off the ground had it not been for you know Mike or or for you know whoever." Um, I'll be I'll be brutally honest we would have found somebody to take this over the finish line, okay? No, that's right. No matter what. No, that's right. But what we would not have had was so much fun, so much fun. These guys have been um, just a dream team to work with, every single one of them. Um, you know, Joe, I, I'm, you kept Diana up to speed for us, and it, and it was, we, we'll never be able to repay you for it. You yeah. know, um, all, all the assurance that we've had, we were able to, you know, shoot them a text message if we were just, you know, crying uncontrollably. Is this really happening? You know? And, and they would give us the reassurance that they need and just say, trust us, everything's going to be okay. These guys had our back um, every minute of every day, but they made it fun. And I think that's what's so important. It was so important for our community because, you know, although the, this whole process has been long and torturous and it seemed like it was just never going to end and it was tear-filled and it was heartbreaking because we lost people along the way, but we had each other and we were all together and that's what was most important. And these guys were just part of the family. You know, it was just a large extended group of family that fought together. And I just want to thank our community of advocates. I don't think that um, a lot of you give yourselves the credit that you deserve, but you do. As my mom likes to remind us, you weren't between a rock and a hard place. You were the rock and the hard place. So give yourselves a hand. Yeah. Yeah. We adopted uh, a quote that I think has sort of um, carried us through this, and we often, um, you know, remind each other of this quote. 
I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone into the water that will create many ripples. You all created ripples. Every time you told your story, you created a ripple. Every time you asked somebody to pray for you, you created a ripple. Every time you called your representative or your senator or sent a letter, you created a ripple. And every single one of those gestures was extremely meaningful, and that is why we are here today. And I want to remind you that had it not been such a long journey, had it not felt like torture at times, today wouldn't be nearly as special. If we had just been handed this victory early on, you know, two years ago, today wouldn't be nearly as special. We worked really hard for this, and we won. Compassion won today. Yeah. Yeah. I promise I'll be done soon, but uh, lastly, I want to, um, I, I wanted to just recognize one very, very special individual. Um, Campaign for Compassion is often referred to as the moms, the mama bears, you know, and we're given a lot of the credit and um, a lot of the accolades. Um, but someone who's always there for us, someone who was one of our very early on co-founding members and who has been really the backbone of this movement is a chronic pain patient named Luke Schultz. <laughs> Some of you may have noticed Luke at some point here in the Capitol because he's the only one standing in a room. He's the only one standing in a meeting, and it is because he's in such severe chronic pain that he cannot physically sit down. But he gets here for everything. He's driven here in a cot in the back of his van. He makes it here every single time. He has been dedicated to this cause, and he has done everything that we've ever needed to have done. So I'd like to, um, first of all, name him an honorary mama bear. <laughs> And I want him to be recognized as the MVP of the medical cannabis movement. And with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up. I just want to say thank you again, all of you, for being here. Um, it's been a real honor to be part of this team. Um, it was, I think, a labor of love for so many of us. Um, and I I'm just so grateful for this day to finally be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lolly, I'm very nervous. <laughs> um, you know, so many people have come up to me today and say, can you believe this day has come? I just can't believe it. And I keep saying, yes, I can. I can believe it's here. I never doubted for a minute that it would come. I didn't think it would quite take this long, but I never doubted for one second that this day would come. Um, it's been full of lots of tears and lots of trials. Um, but never did I doubt this day would come because I knew that the people in this room, the people behind me, the legislators that have surrounded us with their love and their compassion, I never doubted this day would come. And it's here. Um, I laid in bed last night and I was looking at my daughter who is the reason I got into this fight, and I think a lot of us have gotten into this fight for a loved one, um, and for me it was my daughter, Lorelei. And I just caressed the little contours of her face, and I thanked the Lord that she's made it this far to see this day. And I just thought over the timeline of this journey, and walking into Senator Fulmer's office, and I thought, this is our guy. This is our guy. Sorry. <laughs> Senator Leach, I know you were working really hard before he came onto the scene, but um, I knew that Senator Fulmer was going to be the guy who could, 
could get together with you and make this work. And I went back to Lally and I said, Senator Fulmer is our guy. He can help us. We can make this happen. And we got tons of information together, Lally and I, and we went back to Senator Fulmer. And I, we convinced him that he was our guy. Um, it took some time, but we convinced him. Um, and so, uh, you know, the... The, the events that, that played out in my mind, I mean, they were almost tangible. Um, and, and I thanked God. I, 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 I mean, the glory has to go to him first, um, to God. Um, for Big D here, for being brave enough, to having, you know, I mean, clearly he has, you know, he's a, ahead of the curve on most things. Um, <laughs> but, you know, for, uh, for being brave enough to stand up for this issue before a lot of people were. Um, you know, and Mike Fulmer, I could say he's just being brave enough for teaming up with this guy. Um, <laughs> but they went from being, you know, Crazy Dalen and Marijuana Mike to being true champions to this cause. And, you know, they will forever be known from this day forward as people that we have always known them to be, which are champions to this cause. They are saving. They are going to save the lives of millions of people from this day on. People that they will never meet, they are saving the lives of because they said yes when others said no. And I can't thank them enough for that. I want to thank Governor Wolf, who did the same thing. We had an administration that came before. We had an administration that came before that it was always closed doors and turned backs. And we never had that with Governor Wolf. He was always open-armed and ready to fight for us whenever we needed it. And so thank you, Governor Wolf, from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. So today, as I finish, I think the most important message I want to put out there is that when you get a group of truly dedicated people together that have the same goal and the same mind and the same hearts, you can achieve anything. That's right. You truly can. Don't give up. Don't give in. Thank you to all of our legislators. Thank you to all of our patient advocates, all of the caretakers. Truly, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much, and God bless you all. Okay, I am now going to make it official. Is that all right? It's law! Yeah. Yeah.